All right, God bless everyone this afternoon. Sarah Marie here um, for our lunchtime live. Um, I am, uh, I'm ready. Are you guys ready? Because I'm ready. <laughs> uh, just a couple of housekeeping items. My laptop uh, was completely dead and for some reason has not want to go past 1% battery, but it's on. It seems to be lagging on my side a little bit. So I just want to be sure if you guys can let me know that you can see me, hear me okay. And hopefully even though it's connected and even though it only says it's at one percent it's hopefully good to go all right get just said yep so um i'm praying that this all stays good to go and god bless you angie over here on instagram so why don't we just pray and we're going to jump right in and we're not going to waste any more time. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you for your love. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for your goodness, God. Lord, I thank you for the privilege to be able to uh, speak about your word and teach about your word, Father God. Lord, I thank you that we are able to speak freely here, Father God, about your goodness and, um, and the truth of your word. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would continue to minister to us, that you continue to reveal your strength, reveal your power, reveal your truths, reveal these kingdom keys so that we can grab onto them, Lord, and, and unlock your power in our lives, God. This is um, our desire is just to fulfill your desires for us, to fulfill your commands that you have given us, Lord, to be your kingdom agents, Lord, to uh, release your will on the earth. And so, Father God, I just, I thank you and I glorify your name. Once again, I just pray that you will speak to us and minister to us and every single person who's meant to be connected today, or even those who will listen to this on the replay, Lord, I pray that they would be touched by you, that Holy Spirit, you would reveal to them, open up their eyes, their ears, their hearts to receive your word today. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, we pray all things. Amen and amen. All right. So let's jump right into our study. We are unlocking the power with prayer and praise. We have been deep diving into uh, the scriptures of the Psalms, these beautiful um, hymns and prayers and uh, songs of deliverance. I mean, we have been studying in the book of Psalms for couple of months now. And so we are in week 15 of this study and we were just focusing on the first book of the Psalms. So the book of the, what we know as the Psalms, those 150 um, are actually uh, five separate books that were combined into our modern day Bible. And so we have been taking the themes or focusing on the themes within those first uh, set of Psalms. And today we're actually going to jump into book two. All right. So, um, but first, I'm going to do a quick recap of what we talked about last time. And then uh, this week's theme, we're going to, again, have a little introduction to the themes of book two. And then we're going to dive into uh, some scriptures within this book talking about thirsting for God. OK, really powerful um, way to. Well, let me not get to, let me not get ahead of myself. Thirsting for God, all right? Uh, and then we'll talk about some key takeaways. How do we apply this to our daily lives? And then we'll talk about next steps, announcements, and prayer requests. Um, all right. So it looks like everything is good to go. So I'm just gonna keep going. So what did we learn last time? Last time we were kind of finishing up this uh, kind of sub series within the series about prophetic worship and and how the Psalms actually spoke of the Messiah, spoke of prophecy. Uh, we talked about Psalm 22 specifically, this messianic Psalm that not only spoke of the suffering of the coming Christ, right? This was written probably at least a thousand years before Christ. And so um, we know that this was prophetic worship that David released. But not only that, but Jesus also himself quoted this Psalm on the cross. And so we talked about all the beautiful imagery there. Um, and so even though this Psalm, Psalm 22 starts in a dark place, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It doesn't end there, right? David's heart as he wrote this, and, and I believe also Jesus's heart as he endured the cross, turned back to the truth of who God is, but you are holy and enthroned in the praises of Israel. And so after that moment of worship and even more things that were going on, even in that moment of worship, but the Psalm ends in victory. And it's a beautiful parallel for Jesus's ultimate sacrifice on the cross, you know, might have felt forsaken, might have Jesus was separated because of the sin that he had to bear on our behalf. 
but it ends in victory. It ends in the fact that Jesus paid the price for all of us and we're able to have the keys right, of the kingdom because of what he endured. Uh, and so some of the kingdom keys that we talked about was just how powerful it is to enthrone God, right? To know that God is holy and enthroned in our praise. So we have the power to bring his presence to wherever we are just by summoning him, just by worshiping him. And so when we're feeling distant, when we're feeling alone, when we're feeling forsaken, we can turn to worship and we can invite God to invade our situations. I mean, that is just, that in and of itself is mind blowing to think that as children of God, we have that access. Um, also, you know, kind of a big revelation here too, is that if Jesus relied on praise and worship, if Jesus quoted with his last breaths on the cross, quoted multiple Psalms, right? With his first, his, out of the seven last sayings, uh, three of them actually are in the Psalms. He starts with it and ends it with it as well. We know that if Jesus used praise and worship, he relied on the Psalms to strengthen him through the cross, then certainly we can follow that example for how to endure our daily cross. We can turn to prayer. We can turn to praise. We can turn to worship. Amen. And so with that being said, we're going to continue to dive into these Psalms because they are so, so powerful. So like I said, this week and now in the next several weeks, we're going to be focusing on book two of the Psalms. So book two um, is the Psalms 42 to 72. Um, and also we're going to talk specifically about thirsting for God. But before we move forward, okay, before we move forward into book two, I actually want to point point out how book one ends, okay? And so each of the five books of the Psalms ends with an outburst of praise. It's so powerful. And so as we continue to finish each of these books, I just want to point out these, this like culmination of praise that the psalmists leave for us. And uh, we got to think it's just like this powerful statement to like, oh, I'm going to wrap up this book, right? I'm going to wrap up this book with just the uh, powerful summary of what this is all about. And so the last verse of book one, Psalm 41, verse 13 says, blessed be the Lord God of Israel from everlasting to everlasting. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. And so this is such, a, again, it's an outburst of praise. It means no matter what I got going on, right? No matter all the things we've talked about in this whole book, all of the trying, all of the trials, all of the suffering, all of the turnarounds, every everything that we've talked about, let's point our eyes back to the main picture here. And that is blessed be the Lord God of Israel from everlasting to everlasting. Amen and amen. And so as was common for each individual Psalm, right? And we point this out every single time is that each book also ends with eyes, not upon the issues, not upon the enemies, but back on Yahweh, back on the covenant. God of Israel, who is to be praised forever and ever. Amen. So um, again, that's just a way to sum up book one, and now we're ready to enter into book two. So uh, again, just a little bit of an intro to this next segment of Psalms is that as we talked about and why we focused so much on David previously is because David is the only known psalmist of book one, okay? In this next book though, we're introduced to a few more Holy Spirit inspired songwriters of the time. So we have Asaph who writes some um, Solomon, Davidson, uh, the sons of Korah, and also David. <laughs> he doesn't really go anywhere, right? He still pens actually 18 of the 31 of the Psalms in this book too. So still more than half came from David, right? The sweet Psalmist of Israel. Uh, then an interesting fact, because there are quite a few that are, um, that are noted to be by the sons of Korah. And so the sons of Korah were Levites, which we know Levites were in charge of ministering to the Lord day and night. Um, and they came from the family of Kohath. Um, and so if you do a little bit of history on Korah, um, back in Moses's time, Korah, father, the first Korah, he uh, led a rebellion, actually, and Dave, and God wasn't happy about this. He led a, rebe a rebellion against Moses, um, and God judged him, God, him and the leaders that joined him, um, and they died. But 
God was merciful in that he let the sons of Korah live. And so by David's time, right, we know that generations passed since then. By David's time, it seems that the descendants of this family, the sons of Korah, actually served in a, a musical aspect of temple worship, okay? The Korahites are mentioned multiple times in the Old Testament um, as being those who would sing or who would praise or to would lift up a shout. And so um, one example is that in 2 Chronicles, Chronicles chapter 20, verse 19, which if you have time, spend some time in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. It's one of my favorite stories of how powerful worship is. I mean, I dedicated a whole chapter of it to, in my book. Um, but besides the fact, it's just it's kind of a beautiful thing to see that the Korahites, the sons of Korah, um, didn't suffer or they broke a generational curse, right? If you think about it, they're their father led a rebellion, but they chose to continue to worship, to continue in their lineage of being Levites. And so perhaps they were just so grateful for God's mercy that they became notable in Israel for praising God. Um, it also shows just how powerful it is to be like, I'm my, maybe my father, my earthly father wasn't a great person, but I don't have to continue in that. I can break that generational curse and I can choose to bless the Lord and unlock blessings in my life. So um, again, just a little bit of tidbit, a little bit of history uh, behind that as um, again, in book two, there are uh, a few Psalms that are a Attributed to the sons of Korah, or otherwise known as the Korahites. All right. Some Old Testament history there for you. All right. That's where that Bible trivia, we can be uh, <laughs> on the up and up for some of these lesser known um, people, but still important nonetheless. Another interesting fact in book two is that the the Hebrew name for God that is used mostly in this book, and it stands out as being unique, is that God is, is referred to as Elohim, okay? And Elohim is the overarching theme and revelation of God in these 31 uh, songs. And so Elohim, as we know, we, we've seen it before, it's one of the names of God um, in the Hebrew. It really uh, depicts God as the supreme God, right? The supreme one, the creator, the, the holy judge, right? He's the ruler. He's the strong one. Um, another way um, that sometimes it's translated God Almighty mighty, right? Elohim. And so um, again, this is the name that's used for God in the original Hebrew throughout these Psalms significantly more than it was used in book one. So in book one, God is more commonly referred to as Lord with the all L capital, <laughs> L-O-R-D in all caps, which really we know it um, stands for Yahweh, W or Y H W H, right? The um, those are the letters that signify the name of God, like I am. And so in book one, which we were just in, Yahweh is used 272 times versus Elohim only used about 15. But in book two, that a balance is kind of flipped. In book two, God is more commonly referred to as Elohim. So with Yahweh only used about 20 times, but 164 times as Elohim. So again, just an interesting fact that as we look at these scriptures, it's just this revelation of God that's depicted in these songs as being just the only one, right? Like the supreme almighty. Um, Elohim is used in Genesis chapter one, verse one, right? Where God created the heavens and the earth. It's Elohim created the heavens and the earth. So um, again, just the revelation of God as Elohim. Uh, are you guys still with me? Interesting stuff? <laughs> Hopefully. All right. So now, that was just a little intro to book two, some interesting facts about book two, and now we're going to jump into how book two starts, and it starts with this beautiful concept, this beautiful picture of thirsting for Elohim, thirsting for God Almighty. So, Psalms chapter 42, the first one in book two, verses one and two, it says, Again, to the chief musician, we've talked about that before, a contemplation of the sons of Korah. We talked about them. So here it says, as the deer pants for the water brooks, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? So 
But let's just break down those two verses of how this book starts off. So first of all, a contemplation of the sons of Korah. That's a new word, right? We've seen a prayer of David, a psalm of David. But here we have, and maybe in your translation, you might, in your note, it might say uh, a mascal of, of, um, of the sons of Korah. So a contemplation, or in the Hebrew, a mascal is considered a poem or a song that was specifically intended for instruction. It's didactic in nature. And so while we certainly know and believe that every scripture is inspired by the Holy Spirit for instruction, right, for correction, this, in again, in the Hebrew um, or in the Jewish uh, tradition was specifically written in a way to instruct their families, to instruct their fellow, uh, their fellow brethren. And so just an intro interesting um, point to make of this specific song, that it was a song of instruction, okay? Um, it actually reminds me of, I believe it's in Ephesians, when, um, to Ephesians or Colossians, anyway, the Apostle Paul wrote to one of the churches, and he said that we are to instruct each other and admonish each other with psalms, right? So here's, an, you know, where we need to teach each other through worship. We need to teach each other through songs of praise. And so that's kind of the idea here is this contemplation, this instruction of this song. Lord, teach us something here. There's a revelation here that you want to share with us. So again, this beautiful picture, the deer pants for water. Have you think like what it looks like for an animal to pant for something? It's like, right? It's like, I, I desperately need water. It's a longing for water. It's a crying out for water. It's this idea of aching with thirst, right? You're, you're aching with thirst, maybe because you're in a drought season, right? Where this deer cannot find water anywhere. And it's just panting and looking for nourishment, looking for, for something to quench its thirst. Or maybe it's thirsty because it was just in a heated pursuit. It had a predator coming after him and it had to, it had to run with all its strength to get away from that predator. And so it is aching with thirst, looking to be refreshed and renewed. And so it's this idea that the psalmist is writing here, that the sons of Korah are saying, this is the way, this is the way that my soul pants for God. My soul longs for God. My soul cries out for God. My soul is aching with thirst for God. This is a desperate need for the presence of the Lord a desperate desire, a thirst that is beyond just a regular thirst, not just, hey, I, I just, you know, could use some water, but it's like, I am so thirsty that it hurts. I am so thirsty that my mouth, my mouth is so dry that I, I just need, I, nothing else matters. I need to quench this first before this thirst before anything else. And that's how the psalmist is describing their desire and passion for the Lord. My soul pants for God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? So, you know, so when you read it and you read it slowly and you read it over and over again, you say, wow, there's so much emphasis on just God, 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 right? It's my soul thirsts for you, God. My soul, my pant, I pant for you, for the God, for God, for the living God. Why so much repetition? And so this is our very first example where the word here used for God is Elohim. And as I said, and before Elohim is that supreme being, that mighty one of Israel. And not only Elohim, but also the word Elohim, Kaim, which means the living God. And so I don't just need any God. I don't need just any lowercase g God, right? My soul thirsts for the one true God. My soul thirsts for the God who is real. My soul thirsts for the God who is alive. My soul thirsts for the mighty God who can help me, who can, he's the only one who can help me in my current weakness. He's the only one who can help me in my current state of exhaustion. He's the only one who can quench my thirst. And so my soul is thirsty for Elohim. My soul is thirsty for Elohim, Kaim, the living God, the only true God. I am not, I, nothing else will quench this thirst, but my God, Elohim. 
That's so powerful, guys. So powerful. And then I love this last line of verse two where he says, when, when shall I come and appear before God? Right. It was it's this longing to be in the presence of God where I can't wait. When is the next time that I can come and worship him? When is the next time that I can come and pray? When is the next time that I come? I can come and serve in the house of the Lord. When is the next time that's the old? This psalmist, the sons of Korah are so desperate for the presence of God that the priority is when's the next time I can meet with the Lord? When's the next time that I can be with him? And this is the type of relationship that God wants us to have, uh, that constantly in our day, that we're not just focused, when's the next time that I can sit and watch a movie? When's the next time that I can go out on a date? When's the next time that I'm going to eat my meal, right? Sometimes we're just so focused on these other things, which, yeah are still important, but they're not the most important when instead our hearts should be thirsting for God so much that we're thinking, when's the next time I can be in the house of the Lord? When's the next prayer meeting? When's the next event? When's the next, you know, I can't wait for Sunday morning, right? I can't wait until the doors of the church open again so that I can come and present myself before the Lord. I can't wait for morning to come so I can go back into my prayer closet and I can go and, and submit myself before the Lord. I can't wait until my kids have nap time so that I can go and pray. I can't wait until I can open up my Bible again. I can't wait until I can pray before my Lord. I can't wait for the next opportunity to be in the presence of the Lord. This is what God wants. This is the type, and this is what he's, again, the sons of Korah are trying to instruct us this is the way that we should be panting for the Lord, desiring his presence, thirsting for the living God, drinking and thirst are their common pictures that are used in the scriptures, right, to describe our spiritual need and also the fact that God, Elohim, can supply that need for us. And this psalm really goes even beyond that. It, not, it doesn't just show a need. What a desperate need. This is essential for my life. This is essential. And this is the only thing that matters to me right now. Because once we know just how good God is, once we know what his presence feels like, once we have experienced his power, our souls should be in a constant state of longing to encounter even more of God's presence. Where there is no water, there's no life. So without God's presence, without the Lord quenching my thirst, I cannot be sustained. That We have nothing to sustain our lives without the presence of God. And Jesus said, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. John 7, 37. Without Jesus, we are spiritually dehydrated. And that's not God's desire for you. He doesn't want you to walk around dehydrated. He doesn't want you walking around um, malnourished. He wants you to be filled with his presence. He wants to fill you to overflowing so that your hearts will flow rivers of living water, right? He wants us to be in that state of longing for him, but he's not going to leave us longing. He's going to sustain us. He's going to meet our need. He's going to satisfy us and show us that it is worth it. It is worth it to desire him in this way. I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know in the chat. Is this, give me at least an AM uh, or AM, a, a, an amen or a heart or something to let me know that this is making sense. Is this speaking to anybody today? My God, my God, my God, my God. God, you are so, so good. And not only is this concept in this song but there's another one that I want us to read. Psalm 63. Now this one's a Psalm of David. Because like I said, David, he's, he's still in this book. <laughs> and David wrote this when he was in the wilderness of Judah. It says so right there in the notes, right before verse one. A Psalm of David when he was in the wilderness of Judah. 
And David said, oh God, you are my God. Here's that repetition again, right? Where it sounds like repetition, but truly he's revealing something here. We'll talk about that in a minute. Oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So I have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. Because your loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise you. Thus, I will bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness. And my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. So good. So let's break this down. David also another psalmist thirsting for Elohim. David starts this psalm with what sounds like repetition, right? Oh God, you are my God. But in the Hebrew, he's saying, oh Elohim, you are my El, okay? So the El that's in Elohim stands for God, right? But what he's really saying is, oh, Elohim, you are my mighty one, my God almighty. Like, that's so powerful, right? That it's you, oh, God, you are my God. You are my mighty one. Oh, supreme God, you are my God almighty, right? Like, that's just a deeper revelation and relationship with the Lord. And to think that David is saying this when? When he's in a literal wilderness, right? He's literally in a dry and thirsty land. He is literally experiencing this from a physical perspective. But above the physical, David's soul is what's thirsty for God. It's his soul that thirsts for God. Yes, he also says, my flesh longs for you, right? It's not just my spirit. It is all of me, my body, my mind, my spirit is thirsting for you. He was so desperate for God's presence that he made it the priority of his day. Even in this desert season, even when he was in the wilderness of Judah, even when he is hiding out, he's in this hiding season. He says, early will I seek you. And now to me, I see this, we, it's, this is two ways that not only does he seek the Lord in the morning, early will I seek you, but it, it also means that you are the first thing that I seek, right? It says David is walking through a dry and thirsty land, right? He could have been seeking actual shelter. He could have been seeking actual you know, place to physically drink. But he didn't say that that's what he was seeking for. First, he said, my soul thirsts for God. My soul thirsts for Elohim. And so above all else, he... David was seeking God in the same way when we're going through seasons, who's the first thing that you're, who's the first person you're going to? Are you calling your friend to vent? Are you calling someone else? Are you going to a piece of cake? Are you going to, you know, a substance to try to make you feel better or calm down? Or are you going first? Are you going early to seek the Lord's presence? Because guess what? God knows what you need. He knows what you need physically, spiritually, mentally, and he will sustain you and he will satisfy you and he will provide for you. But we got to go to him first and not as a last resort. Mm. Early will I seek you. I go to God first and not as a last resort. Early will I seek you. Yes. Pastor Selena says, I love that David's thirst was for God, not other things. Yes, amen, amen. Early I go to you. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. Even though there's all these other things going on. And what happens here? David's satisfied. 
God satisfies our hunger and our thirst. David said, because your loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise you. This is the reason why David was so motivated to worship God. To David, God's goodness was better than life. God's love was better than life. God's mercy was better than anything else in this life. And so it didn't matter that he was in a wilderness. It didn't matter that he was in a dry and thirsty land. All that mattered was that God's presence was there. All that mattered is that he knew he could he could communicate with God. Verse two, he said, I have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. What, what sanctuary is David going to in the desert? Where is he going to in the wilderness of Judah? What, there is no sanctuary there. But the reality is, is that David knew that all he had to do was worship. He knew that all he had to do was open up his mouth in praise and he would be able to connect with the presence of God and he would be able to see and experience God's power and God's glory. And so he said, because your loving kindness is better than anything else, I am going to worship you instead. And I'm going to see how you're going to show up. Do we feel this way? Do we truly love and honor God above everything else in our lives? That's a question that only you can answer. That's between you and God. But are we so sold out for God that we allow him alone to satisfy us? Verse five says that even though David was in a dry and thirsty land, because he praised the Lord, because he looked for God's presence, he felt satisfied like if he was eating the most rich food. He felt like he was eating bone marrow and the fatness of a, of a good meat, right? After praising with his lips, after lifting up his hands, after bowing down, right? He says, thus, I will praise you while I live. I'm sorry, I will bless you while I live. The, the word for blessed here is barak, which means to bow down and worship. And so he's, I'm bowing down to you while I live. Not only am I going to bow down, but I'm going to lift up my hands. And not only am I going to bow down and lift up my hands, but my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. And because he, was, he gave his body completely to authentic worship, to praise God with all that he had, with a full body experience, he felt and experienced the satisfaction of a good meal. It, it even points us back to when David said, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies, right? It's a full table. It's full of, of food that I can eat and be sustained with. And so even when we're walking through a dry and thirsty then we can be satisfied and filled and well nourished and well hydrated by the very presence of God. My God. Yes, looking back at the chat here, early will I seek you. This signifies that God was a priority to him. Yes, worship was a priority to David and a lifestyle. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And it was in that moment of worship that his soul was satisfied. And so, like I said before, God wants us to remain thirsty for him. He wants us to hunger after him so then he can satisfy us with his goodness, with his loving kindness. Such a great way to live. So my prayer for all of us is that may we seek to be deeply satisfied by coming to God in a state of desperate thirst for him. And after experiencing and receiving God's great love, may we continue to praise him without reservation. David praised God, again, I'll say it again, with his whole body, right? In those verses, in, 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 in Psalm 63, we see that it was his eyes, his lips, his hands, his soul, his mouth, his mind. Even verse six that we didn't read, but it says, when I remember you on my bed, I meditate on you in the night watches, right? This is at all times. There was, there's a way to pray and praise and worship and meditate on the Lord. Even when you're laying down in that bed, even when you're laying down that you can be meditating on God, remembering 
the goodness of the Lord. It's a full body experience. And I want to leave you with a couple more verses that just shows you about, again, this, this theme of hunger and thirsting for God, but then God's promise to fill. Matthew 5, 6, Jesus said, these are the Beatitudes, right? Sermon on the Mount, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. This is a promise. When we hunger and thirst for God, we shall be filled. We shall be satisfied. We shall have everything that we need, even in a dry and thirsty land. Revelation chapter 22, 16 through 17. Again, words of Jesus. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, come. And let him who hears say, come. And let him who thirsts, come. Whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. Let him take the water of life freely. This is the invitation for you today. This is the invitation for all of us to come thirsty to the presence of God and then take, receive the water of life Receive Jesus, receive him freely so that you can be satisfied. Your soul can be satisfied. It can be safe. It can be nourished. It can be washed. And you can experience the salvation of God. It's such a beautiful thing. I know I didn't do a lot of shouting today, (laughs) but it's just a beautiful meditative concept for us to consider. Are we panting for the Lord like a deer pants for water? Are we accepting his invitation to come and drink of his water? Are we asking Jesus for the living water? Just like Jesus said to the woman at the well, he goes, if you knew what I had to offer you, you would be asking me for a drink. Jesus is the living water. Let us drink him in. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's, all right, practical application. (laughs) How do we apply this to our lives? What are you taking away from today? Let me know in the chat. What are you taking away from today? What did God remind you of, speak to you of, show you something new? Um, maybe the scripture you never read before, maybe just a thought you haven't thought about, or maybe again, it was just a reminder. Let me know in the chat. Yes. Gidget says, our God is a good, good father. That's right. He doesn't leave us in that state of longing. He satisfies the need. And then when we see how good he is, we just want more anyway. Right. And so we stay desperate for him and he continues to fill us. And we just like this constant process. Right. It's kind of like the water cycle. You know, um, it just keeps going and going and going. Um, amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right. A couple of things. We talked about how in Psalm uh, in the in this book, two of the Psalms, Psalms 42 to 72, The name for God that's used the most is Elohim. So let's apply that to our lives this week. Let's worship God for being Elohim. Let's use his name in that way. Let's pray to Elohim. Let's pray to the supreme God, the mighty one, our God almighty. And just know that that is a facet of who he is. Amen. And so we can use his name in that way when we come to him in prayer and in worship. Also, the question to ask yourself is what or whom do I tend to go to when I'm weak, when I'm tired, when I'm feeling spiritually drained? Am I I seeking God first to satisfy my needs? I'll tell you right now that no one else and nothing else can quench the thirst that's innate in all of us to connect with the Father. Nothing else will satisfy but relationship 
with the father. And so we got to go through Jesus to experience the love of the father. And so I pray that as we think about this and as we go about our days, that we're noticing that the Holy Spirit brings revelation to the times and the places and the scenarios when we're not going to God first so that we can make that switch and go to the Lord first to realize that he's the only one who can satisfy our needs and can quench our thirst and can satisfy our hunger. And then let us be thirsty for God, right? And if you lack this desire, you're hearing me and you're like, Sarah, I, I want to be like this. I want to be thirsty for God, but I don't know how to do this. Like, I, I just don't have that desire. Ask him. If you lack this desire, ask God to give it to you. This is God's desire for you. And so when you ask in alignment with his will for your life, he will answer. God delights to satisfy our hunger and thirst for him. And so he will give you the hunger if you ask for the hunger. He will give you the thirst if you ask for the thirst. So ask God to increase your capacity for hungering and thirsting after the presence of the Lord. And then, as I said before, trust that God is the only God that can quench your thirst. Nothing else satisfies. Nothing else satisfies. Only Elohim, only the one true God, only the creator of the universe can satisfy your need. Amen. All right, let's pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, once again. Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you that you give us access to your presence through our praise, through our worship, through lifting up our hands, through bowing down to you by singing a song, by opening up our mouths for having joyful lips, God, and that you satisfy our thirst and hunger for you. But you want us to be hungry for you. You want us to be in that state of, of just desiring to be with you and, and thinking and prioritizing your presence and thinking, when can I be in the house of the Lord again? When can I hide away with the Lord again? When can I seek his face again? And that we are in a constant state of desiring to be with you in a lifestyle of intimacy through worship, through prayer, through praise, through reading and meditating on your word, God. Lord, I pray that you would increase our thirst for you, that you would increase our hunger for you, Lord, and that we would, we would um, be satisfied in your presence, but stay hungry for more and more and more of you, Lord. Lord, again, I ask for you to increase our capacity to take in more of your glory, to experience more of your power, to experience more of your presence. Lord, I thank you in advance because I know that you answer prayers like this, God. I know that you do. I know that you hear us. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes, Kidget says in the, in the chat, everything is temporary, but God's satisfaction is forever. That is so, so good. I love that. Amen. Amen. Clarissa. Yes. Clarissa says, can I get prayer to get this hunger again for the Lord? Yes. Let's pray for you right now, Clarissa. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I, I present to you, Sister Clarissa, Father God, Lord, you know her. You know her so well, Father God. You know her thoughts. You know her desires. And right now she is confessing her desire to have a hunger for you, my Lord. She's hungering for you. She wants an increased appetite for the things of the Lord. Lord, I pray that you would increase her, her capacity capacity right now to want your presence, to desire your word, that she is her priority in life in each and every day is to spend time with you, to open up the Bible, to sit in your presence, Lord, to sit with you and dine with you, my Lord, so that she can be fed and that she could drink from, from living waters, that she could be um, well watered in her life, Father God, to drink from deep wells of your presence, my Lord. Lord, I bless Clarissa right now, Father God. Lord, I, I, I break and I bind any type of, of hindrances, Lord, in her life that are trying to come against or stopping her from being able to experience the fullness of your presence, God. Lord, I pray that any strongholds, Lord, we pull them down in the name of Jesus. Any footholds of the enemy, Lord, we, we cast them out in the name of Jesus. And we pray that in this moment, Lord, any blockages, that are blocking her from experiencing your presence would be removed right now in the name of Jesus and that 
she would hunger and thirst for you in a brand new way. Lord, she says, I want to feel this way again, but I pray that you would give her a new hunger, a new desire, a new thirst for you, God, something that she's never felt before, something brand new, Lord, unlock it in her life right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. All right, couple of announcements. And then if anyone also has a prayer request, please feel free to put it in the chat now and we will pray. Amen. Amen. Yes, Clarissa says, I'm getting delivered. Yes. Glory be to the Lord. We come in agreement that you, your deliverance is already here because Yahweh is the deliverer, because God, Jesus, Yeshua is your deliverer. He's a God who saves. He's a God who rescues. And I thank the good Lord that he is moving in your life right now. Amen. And yes, um, let's see, Gray. I think it's great, great. And, and on Instagram, she says, I am taking this prayer for myself as well. Amen. Yes, sister, receive that prayer. Anyone who is listening, receive that prayer. Come in agreement with this prayer. Grab onto the blessings of God and allow Graylin. Yes. Okay. So Graylin, Lord, we're declaring, Father God, that you're, that she would also draw closer to you. And as she draws closer to you, you will draw closer to her and she would experience more and more of your presence, Father God. Increase, Lord, their hunger and thirst for you and satisfy them in your presence, my God. Lord, we thank you, thank you, thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus, Lord. We glorify your name. I bless you, Clarissa. I bless you, Graylin. Um, uh, and then, uh, like I said, if anyone else needs prayer requests, just put it in there. Uh, I have just a couple of announcements to wrap up and then we'll pray. Um, if any others come through as well, praise the Lord. All right. So if you're new to the, to the soul of worship studies, I uh, just want to remind you what our weekly schedule is like. Um, so on Mondays, we do a Zoom a group discussion. So we're able to share with each other and it's a little bit more private setting. I'm um, at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Again, it's on Zoom. So if you would like to join that, you can register at soulofworship.com forward slash online Bible study to get the Zoom link. Then on Tuesdays, I send an email with the PDF download so that you can share it, review it. I also load it into the workshop, which is our online learning portal um, up on Tuesdays. So again, you can download it from there or excuse me, download previous weeks. Uh, and then on Wednesdays, which is today, I do a recap of Monday night's Bible study uh, during the what we call lunchtime live. So I go live on Facebook and Instagram at 12 o'clock Eastern time. Thereabouts, sometimes 12.05 like today, but around noon, <laughs> I'll be live doing a recap for those who can't join the Monday Zooms. And then um, after that, by Thursday, I try to load up the Facebook Live video. Um, I load it up into the workshop so that everything is there for those who have um, logins to that portal. I also load it up into YouTube if you prefer that. Also take the audio and add it up in, or load it up into the, the podcast, the Soul of Worship podcast. So again, lots of resources for you to continue to connect. Maybe you missed the beginning of this and you want to go back, definitely lots of places for you to go and grab it. Um, or if you missed previous weeks, want to share it with somebody, plenty of reasons. <laughs> but And there's plenty of resources available to you to continue to study the word of God and unlock the power of the Lord in your life. As I mentioned before, if you haven't registered for the study, even if you can't join Monday nights, you want to stay here on Wednesdays, but you want the PDF downloads and the reminders, please uh, put your name and email into soulofworship.com forward slash online Bible study. Or if you're on Instagram, you need a link, just send me a message and I can um, just give you the direct link. Or if you go to my profile, you'll be able to click in there as well. Uh, I mentioned the workshop, our online learning portal. Uh, those are on Facebook. You can see uh, what that looks like. And so if you want to create a login to our online learning portal to have all the resources there at your fingertips, you can go to soulofworship.com forward slash workshop. Um, and there you can uh, sign up and you'll be able to have the videos, the downloads, even extra downloads that I have in there. I have a Bible study journal you can download um, and everything is included in one space. You can even add comments and questions um, and I will respond to them. And so uh, again, it's just a, a nice portal that has all of the soul of worship resources all in one place. If you don't already connect with the soul of worship ministry, I uh, pray that you would 
choose to <laughs> stay connected and you can follow on Facebook, on Instagram, podcast, wherever you listen to podcasts, it's called Soul of Worship. Are you making a sound? Um, the workshop that I've mentioned a couple times now, feel free to create that login to our online learning portal. You can also follow on YouTube at Soul of Worship Ministry. Um, and if you feel so led, you can support the Soul of Worship Ministry. You can sew into sew, Soul of Worship, at soulofworship.com forward slash partner. Uh, you can uh, do a one-time gift or set up a monthly recurring, whatever um, the Lord would put on your heart. Again, if that is your desire to help us keep all this um, running, I am in a full-time ministry. This uh, All this stuff takes time and effort, and this is definitely where the Lord uh, has us. And so we definitely appreciate all of our partners and all those who sow into us regularly. Uh, we bless you in the name of Jesus. And you can also support our ministry shop. We have t-shirts and books. Um, um, we got mugs. I got this mug right here. Worship is my warfare. Come on now. <laughs> uh, just as an example here, this one I'm using as a as a kind of a pen holder, but um, I also use mine downstairs for coffee all the time. So in any case, there's lots of stuff available, lots of ways to stay connected um, and and to have daily reminders that worship is powerful and God wants you to worship him. All right, we are almost at capacity for our Waffles and a Worship event on March 11th at 10 a.m. If you're local in Pennsylvania, we'll be um, at our church for Jury Avenue um, in Penn Argyll, Pennsylvania, but we uh, still have a few seats. So if you want to get there, please secure your seat at soulofworship.com forward slash events. We're going to have a, a top of your own waffle buffet, uh, and then we'll have a Bible study teaching, nice and in-person interaction. We'll be teaching from my book worship are you making a sound um and uh this will be for the teens and adults and then uh we'll have a special praise kids class um for those ages three to twelve and so they're gonna have their own lesson also derived from my book but just a little bit more at their level and so and it'll be separate so the kids can you know hang out and the parents can focus <laughs> after they get all like uh sugared up with their syrup on their waffles <laughs> so please if you want to join us please please get your ticket um and let us know so we can be sure to secure your seat uh, if you are not local and you want to continue to learn more about the power of worship, um, you can grab the book at soulofworship.com forward slash book, or you can order it on Amazon, wherever books are sold. Uh, again, it's worship. Are you making a sound? Um, my name is Sarah Murray Popolo, uh, and you can get, uh, again, get this wherever books are sold. It's a 12 week Bible study um, book. It has different as aspects of worship and then all the scripture where you can find it. And then there's question and answer so that you can really um, journey through this, you know, not just reading a story, but that you're applying it to your lives and really getting engaged with what the scripture says about the power of worship. Um, and then if you like um, video lessons and not just writing in a book, um, I also have pre-recorded lessons that go along with each of the videos um, in the book. And so you can get access to that at soloworship.com forward slash course. And so I invite you to go check that out uh, so that you can, you know, fill it out first, then do the recap um, on the pre-recorded videos. Um, and then you can kind of compare answers, add anything else in. Um, and it's just uh, a great resource to continue to study the word of God and as it relates to worship. Okay, those are all of my announcements uh, for today. Um, Amen. 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 Let's see. Clarissa says, please send me how I can connect. I've been listening and following you for a while. Uh, amen. Clarissa, send me a message and we will, we will get connected. Okay. Send me, um, send me a message there on, on Instagram. Um, and, and we can chat. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right. Um, looks like Irene, Irene is asking for prayers for direction and strength and for all to fall in place at his time and keeping my faith so strong. All right. So that's over here on Facebook. Uh, hallelujah. Father God, we come in agreement with sister Irene, Father God, Lord, we present her unto you in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, we know that we can ask anything in your name and it shall be done. And we know that if, if just two people on earth would agree about anything that the father hears in heaven. And so Lord, we pray and we come in agreement with sister Irene that she is looking for direction and strength, Father God, at this time, Lord, I pray that you would 
open up her ears to be able to hear your Holy Spirit, open up her heart and her mind to, to follow after you, to, to know exactly what she should do, Father God. I pray for you to strengthen her body, mind, and spirit, Father God, Lord, so that she can trust that you have everything in the palm of your hands, God. Lord, I pray that she would have that increased thirst for you so that she can go into that time of prayer. She can go into that place of worship, that she can open up your scriptures because Lord, I trust and believe that every answer to every problem and every situation that we have can be found in your presence, can be found in your word. And so Lord, I pray that as she draws near to you, that you will give her this the, the, the direction, you will give her the strength, that you will keep her faith strong and that you will reveal to her exactly what she is to do. Or you will reveal to her strategies, Lord, and just by the word, the word will nourish her God and give her, give her, um, everything that she needs to be strong in her walk with you, God. So Lord, the more that she goes through, the more that she would seek after you, Lord, and the more that she would experience of your presence, Lord, I believe, and I pray for blessings over Irene in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, my Lord. Amen. All right. Anybody else? Anybody else? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Lord, we thank you. Lord, I just continue to bless every single person who was on, is on, will listen to this in the future. And Lord, I pray that you would continue to bless each and each and every one of them, every single person, and that you, Lord, will be glorified and that you will continue to use this Bible study to draw more people onto you, Father God, Lord, as we continue to lift your name high, as we continue to exalt you, Lord, Lord, as we continue to study your word, Lord, that you will do a mighty thing through this Bible study, through this ministry, Father God, because it's for your glory and for your honor, and that more and more will experience you, Lord. I pray that this, these videos would start going viral, God. Lord, I pray that they would be shared and that more and more people would be able to hear your word, God. Lord, I don't know if I've ever even prayed for that before, but God, I just pray that you would expand territory in this hour, Father God, to draw more people onto you because the time is short and you want to save as many of us as possible. God, you want us all to be saved. And so Lord, I pray for your word to go far and wide and that the hearts would have conviction Lord, bring conviction to the hearts to draw closer to you, Lord, Lord, in Jesus mighty name, Lord, I thank you. And I give you all glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. God bless you all. Um, God bless you all. And I pray that you would all have a great rest of the day. <laughs> and um, if you need anything, let me know. And again, Clarissa, send me a message and anyone else who would like to send me a message. I am available. And um, I pray that again, you have a wonderful rest of the day. Thank you for joining with me today. God bless you.